you know, have no empirical data to support well, that. Well, the data we have, you have to take it sectorally. We, 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 know, we know sugar is down to 180,000, um, less than 180,000 this year. We had 183 last year. Mm. We're less than 180,000 this year for sure. We're going down to 160. Guyana will be importing sugar in the next two years. You take it from me. Uh, rice down from 700,000 tons to about 520 now. A straight 25% uh, decline in rice for the last two years. We, we do, haven't had much um, increase in manufacturing in bauxite and forestry. And gold is showing some um, uptick Resi in production. Yes. But we, are, we have to be careful with the gold because the foreign gold from the two big foreign gold companies are exported. We don't earn any real foreign exchange out of that. We probably earn some royalties, but we don't get a foreign exchange. And the, a lot of gold is still being Well, smuggled. the foreign exchange does come to pay local expenses and so on. Very little, yes. Uh, they, they, they export a lot of gold. So I, I think overall the, the economy is moving into negative territory. I don't see no big plus anywhere. Uh, but there, and there, and, and not no only that, you'll be seeing they're starting to lay off. The gt and is starting to lay off. And, and there are going to be more layoffs in, 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 the, in the thing. And of course, the big calamity we're facing head on is, is, the, is the problem with Gaisuko and the reorganization that is going on down there, some so-called reorganization, which is going to lead to a loss of over 10,000 jobs, clearly out of 17,000 on the economy workforce. Could, could the economy sustain in maintaining that workforce, given the performance of the sector? Well, well the, the economy has um, been bailing it out for some time now. Um, Mr. Jaglio at Babu John said that the $32 billion that we spent over the last three years to bail out guys who is not a lot of money. If you, if, in the overall scheme of things, about $700 billion of the national budget over the last three years. I think he's wrong there because $32 billion is a lot of money, whichever way you look at it. And uh, this year, the, the Minister of Finance did budget $9 billion for Gaisuko. Incidentally, in the Parvatan report, uh, Clive Thomas, who is now the chairman of Gaisuko and who is a major player in that uh, COI, in his projection, he had projected a $5 billion deficit this year for Gaisuko, but nonetheless, he got $9 billion from the Ministry of Finance. So that, that company is in big trouble. The biggest problem we face, though, is the Lots of people are going to be dislocated if they continue how they're going, and clearly they don't have a plan uh, to deal with that, because we've seen that Wales, there's no plan to deal with 700 people, so if you don't have a plan for 700, I don't know how you can get a plan for 10,000. So you're facing big problems on there, and big problems in rice too, big problems in rice, sharp decline in production. But my proposition was uh, and slower, surer, and cleaner. No, 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 sure. The, uh, the, 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 the slowdown uh, and, and the downward trajectory is clear for all to see. But the economy in, in earlier years. If it's I, I cleaner. Think had, had, um, the, the, you, you had cleaner. some drug money, you had. Yeah, you had a large um, illicit kind illicit of trade. Some of that is still going on. Uh, drug money is not the only component of the illegal economy. Uh, a lot of That's illegal, correct. That's correct. the parallel economy is still going on with under invoicing, the tax evasion, and all that still goes on. The drug money, uh, it looks as if that may have slowed down a bit with, with the people here now looking and into that. And that would affect the, the circulation That's affecting of that money in the economy. Country, yes, because uh, those guys were doing a lot of investment, and now we don't have that, it looks like. So that, that's a big slowdown on, on the the legal economy and the formal economy is slowing down, the legal economy is slowing down. And you take, if you uh, add up the two, you would say this economy is in sharp decline. It's in sharp decline and uncontrollably so. And nobody is seeing how this thing could, how it could be turned around to, to get an upward, uh, upward swing. Nobody is seeing it. There's no plan for that. The, okay, you, you, you've indicated sugar. On, on the one mm -hmm. hand, mm -hmm. now, you say there's no plan for sugar and, and, and its reorganization, mm -hmm. but paying huge subsidies every year it's, can it's hardly be a plan either. That's not a plan. That's not sustainable. And, and that, that has been the PPP and the GAO position over the years to keep just, just keep paying this billion dollars a month to Gaisuko, 
to, 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 to bail it out, to keep the, that's been the PPP and the guys to go, the Gahu position. Those positions are also untenable. We, we have spent in the last three years alone $32 billion to keep 17,000 people in the workforce. That's over $2 million per person just to keep them in the job for the last three years. And that also is not sustainable. It's best you'd call each one of them, give them the two million, let them go home and, do, and live their life with it. Uh, uh, so to continue to do that, which is what the PPP is calling for, and the GAU, makes absolutely no sense. But on the other hand, the government itself doesn't have a plan on what to do. They have all these stakeholders meeting and this meeting and that meeting, but still no plan. They, they, they've decided to keep three estates, and they want to get rid of Skeldon, they're closing Wales, they're going to close at more LBI, Rose Hall, and so on, and keep three. No plan. Big problems. So we're going to have big problems here. Now, you recall when the Minister uh, of Finance... Uh, the President doesn't like to hear the word uprising that, that uh, Jack Do used at Babu John. But if you, if you send home 10,000 people from Daisuko, you better be careful because you're going to get a large, angry workforce there dislocated, and they're not going to take it so easily. A lot of people. The issue of rice. Mm -hmm. you, you don't, rice is entirely, um, there's very little state involvement, mm -hmm. state subsidies, mm -hmm. or anything like that. Mm -hmm. um, one does not know what is, how taxation affect, affects the rice industry. Mm -hmm. How do you account for this? I think you, you quickly and roughly worked it out about 25%. Percent decline in decline two years. over uh -huh. two years. Mm -hmm. why, why did that happen? Where was the Minister of Agriculture mm -hmm. and the Minister of Finance when mm -hmm. this is happening? Well, the, the, the first thing about rice, <coughs> we've had this problem with rice and sugar many years ago, you know. It's not the first time we've had problems with rice and sugar. This country did import sugar many years ago, and it also did import rice. That was rice Guatemala, was it? Many years ago. Well, we ain't ready to import rice yet, but we will be importing sugar soon if we continue on the trajectory that we're on with sugar. But coming back to rice, there are a couple of problems with rice. One is the loss of the lucrative um, Venezuela. Venezuela market. That hasn't been replaced, um, for sure. And the, the prices that are paid now by the millers for the paddy are not so, uh, shall we say, uh, substantial as it used to be in the past. So many farmers are not so uh, eager to, to, to do the crop to the extent they used to do it. And um, th that, that has accounted uh, for, for that sharp decline. A lot of people are not doing it anymore. Oh, they're, not, they're not doing it anymore. They're not planting paddy. They're not doing it. The prices are not good and they don't want to do it. But and they're not doing it. Is there some kind of... How, how do you and then there's a political dimension to all of this thing. There's a political dimension to, to the problem of, of the rice industry, which is an industry controlled, I would say, essentially by, by the supporters of the PPP people and the sugar too, to some extent, through the GAU. And uh, some of this has to do with the change in the political leadership of the country. Absolutely. Absolutely. So... There's a connection there, there's a straight connection. That they, uh, are you suggesting that the current administration is not paying sufficient attention mm. to the rice industry? Yeah, yes, absolutely, and, and does not enjoy the confidence of, of, of the rice producers uh, at all. And they don't have, a, I not only have the confidence, they're not even friends of them. And it is the same thing with the GAU, there is too much alienation, there's a lot of alienation. In the case of the Gaul, but, but can friendship drive an entire sector? The friendship can drive an entire sector, but if you're hostile to the sector, you ain't going to get plenty uh, support is, and is progress. It, but is, is that too strong a word? I mean, one can say maybe there's not the same level of, um, of interaction, not the same level of interest. There's, there's you, you may even go as far as saying, well, maybe there's benign neglect. But to say it's hostile... That seems to be taking it a little too far. The, the, the rice industry, through the RPA, which is an arm of the PPP, uh, the RPA has a lot to do with, with the rice industry in this country. And that's an arm of the PPP. No, but we're talking now about the administration and its attitude to this. Well, the, uh, the administration hasn't reached out 
uh, as far as I can see, to the rice nor the sugar. They haven't talked to the people at the rails up to now. And look at these people are out of a job, seven or fifty people, they don't even want to pay them the severance. Everybody reading this and seeing the page sheet and every day in the papers. They're, they're not paying attention to those people. They don't like them and and, and that, that that attitude is reciprocated. Uh, one of the words I used was cleaner. That the economy has uh, lots of the, 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 the corruption that mm -hmm. one associated with the previous administration is no longer there. Would you would you accept that as a proposition? Mm. Well, I think <coughs> on the uh, the narcotics trade, it's it, from just uh, observing and talking to people, it is declining. But but uh, corruption is, is uh, starting to manifest itself in this present administration. The, the PPP had long years of it, and and uh, I think there was a lot of corruption there. Uh, but to say it is not present in this, in this present administration would not be speaking the truth. There is corruption here in the, in the place. Well, like, um, w we, we know one heard the, the um, Durban Park project. You heard about the, I don't the know bond, the, Durban Park. the medical, the, the, um, the Ministry of Health ar arrangement. For, for a renting of a bond? I, know. I, I don't share the view that Durban Park is a very big corrupt transaction. The, the, from the little I know of it, Durban Park is a project where the private sector friends were supposed to contribute to build the thing. And a lot of contractors went down there and were billing and all but the main it cost, contractors. But it cost the state close to $1 billion. This it, is not a, that oh, was not a private sector oh, initiative. It, it, the private sector built all of that towards the end Towards the end of that project, when the, I think the private sector withdrew towards the end, and then the state had to find the money to finish it off. That's what happened there. So how much then, if, if the state had to inject close to $1 billion uh -huh. in that project, uh -huh. and you were saying that it was towards the end, uh -huh. how much did the whole project cost? The, the private sector, uh, the, the, all the big contractors, plus Bai Shanlin and and the other big Chinese company, they put a lot, of hundreds of millions into it mm -hmm. also. So mm -hmm. we have there, what, an equal amount as the government? There's a lot of money you have there. So you're saying that's the $2 billion we have sitting there? I don't know the numbers. No, but I'm, uh, you, you have a good, have you have a good feel of numbers. I have a good feel for numbers. Well, if the government say they put a, a billion, I don't think they put a billion. They probably put four or five hundred million. No, no, they it. put a, in the, through the budget is over 900 million. Well, uh, uh, probably an equal amount of money was put in there by all the big contractors, which is BK and Basu and North and Bai Shan Lin and um, the, the other Chinese company, Royal and so, some of them. A, bit, a, lot, a lot of money put there, all of them. It may seem perhaps ironic mm -hmm. that the one of the, a, a millstone that, that followed the PPP administration, Jack Dio, mm -hmm. uh, um, former President Jack Dio, this business of, of drugs, the procurement of drugs. Mm. And by the way, have the big is, is it episode this week about a couple hundreds of millions of drugs uh, ordered for the uh, it's emergency, we're told, for the GPHC, and the minister said she, I think, gave approval for all these kinds but, of but, things. But this, this thing here, coming at a time when you've just appointed mm. a the public procurement commission. commission. and all that, yes, yes. Well, how do you explain that? Some, somebody should answer for that. You have this big procurement commission, all these people, uh, Mrs. Corbyn as chairman, and K. Gopal, and all these people, Ms. Dotson, and, and all these people. You hear they're full time people? They're full time what? people, and you have all these agencies get working around them, I think, get an, making an end run, they call it, and, and doing their own thing. <laughs> that's what you have here. I, I would say that's illegal, and that's probably. Uh, has the scent of a corrupt transaction to me, just reading about it in the papers. Notwithstanding the presence of this procurement commission with all these people, who, who were established and created in order to prevent the, the, these, um, all this wickedness, which is still happening. Mm -hmm. Now, President Granger is in, a, is in a very difficult position. He's just removed one minister from the Ministry of Health. Who is that? Um, Mr. Norton. Dr. Norton. Dr. Norton. Mm -hmm. He has put... Um, no, Minister no, Bola Bola Lawrence. Lawrence yeah. And here, the government again is being accused of, as you said, it has a scent 
of corruption. Yeah, well, I, I think then there needs to be uh, a proper inquiry into what happened there. Because you're talking about what hundreds you, of what, millions of dollars. What do you consider proper inquiry? Well, the, the president likes inquiries into all kinds of no, things. No, 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 but we also had an inquiry into <coughs> the um, Larry Singh's bond. Where did that get us? Remember there was a cabinet inquiry into it? Well, I'm not talking about a cabinet inquiry talking, but maybe by, by the Auditor General of Guyana or some independent body to, to look into these things. The cabinet cannot inquire into its own things where... Cabinet its own colleagues, was, uh, where, all where, And cabinet gave the decision on the bond, and then cabinet is inquiring into its own decision. Uh, that, that, that's, uh, that's a non secretary. That, that wouldn't work. You have to have an independent inquiry into these things. If you're going to have an inquiry at all, it has to be conducted by independent people. And, and the question of this, this drug purchases um, needs to be inquired into. I think maybe the Auditor General and some other people could look into it. We've had, an, and this must have gladdened the hearts of many people in the country, mm. a civil, civil society initiative mm. gets people out there, gets signatures, um, gets the, 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 the political temperature, um, or civil society temperature, Rising, the parking meters. Mm -hmm. What's your view on the? Well, I, I, I know. I, I, and I'm, I'm asking you to free yourself of, of your, your, your bias with, I don't the, have a with bias. city council. No, I don't <laughs> have a bias with city council. I was there. I party. I, I joined the protest because I do believe, um, as a driver and a person with a car, they think it's burdensome. Even the president said that it's burdensome, but I think it's illegal under the under the law, the municipal and district council act 2801. And on what grounds? The, 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 the act requires that uh, for contracts that exceed $250,000, you have to go to tender and all of that. That's, mm -hmm. that's in the 2801. And all of that has not been followed. And the, the whole thing is illegal. Well, one and can argue that this was not tender. This, this was, there was no sum involved. Here it was to a partnership, no, a no, joint no. venturing. No, no. Well, um, they can say that. But it says once the thing is valued over two hundred fifty thousand dollars, you you need to have processes. Well, that's civil, but I, I I repeat, that's if you're acquiring a goods or a service. Yeah. Here they weren't acquiring. Well, goods that or that would be a good defense for them to raise. <laughs> I'm not trying to raise <laughs> one for them. Right? The, the, but the fact of the matter is that the the the, the, the contract is burdensome, it, it's illegal, it's not transparent, and you you wake up and you hear these people who've come in here and all these all all this nonsense and. People rightfully uh, should protest and, and uh, make their views known about it. How I, do you? I see that the the latest piece of news is that cabinet is recommended to the city to suspend it, and I don't know how that will work. Because cabinet really has no control over city council. Cabinet has control if they wanted. If they really wanted to exercise control, they would exercise it. But they didn't put in this particular case, they keep saying, oh, you know, the city council, we can't interfere. We can just advise our colleagues over there. But uh, if cabinet wanted to deal with but, it, but seriously, they could. Because, is, is this because the APNU AFC has the majority in city council anyway? Yeah, they, they're running things, and they, they're the people who did it. It's the PNC and the AP, APNU, they did it at the city council. You have Chase Oscar Clark, another, you have Chase Chase Green is a member of the... Um, Exco. Exco. Ex of, of the PNC. PNCR. And, and Oscar Clark is the general secretary of the party, quite an uh, influential and powerful person there. So they, they recommend. The problem with that is they have to be careful that um, if they were to violate the, 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 the contract or suspend it or scrap it, and they give the park and meter company some opportunity to go to court and challenge them. City council could find themselves having to pay damages. I, I would have preferred for the court to decide that the whole thing is illegal and, and put an end to it, rather than city council. And if the court were to decide, I think the matters before uh, Mr. Justice Reynolds, if the court were to decide that the park and meter contract is all illegal, then city council could say that it's ended, but the court ended it, not we. We have to, we have to look at that. I have a preference for the court to end it rather than city council to you end it. You mentioned um, local government. Doesn't our constitution provide for local government commission? Yes, the, the, the constitution provides for local government commission, but they haven't come around to get any debt. These things take a long time to do, unnecessarily no, you, no, so. No, 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 you're making it sound like it's a difficult no, thing to do. They, they make it sound as if it's difficult to do. Look how long it took to do the procurement commission. 
And up to now, they can't get the Ethnic Relations Commission in place because they're, I guess they're busy with a lot of other things. They're, they're not serious people. But, but isn't this, in fact, a violation of the Constitution? Of course it is. But the ministers are in no hurry to do it because, as one politician told me, the ministers is in no hurry to do the local government commission because when you don't have the commission, the minister is the commission. So he's in no hurry to have this commission. He is the commission when you don't have the commission. So he's in no hurry to get it done. And of course, the PPP on the other side, but, they're busy with a lot of other things. But, but they might be busy. And mm. the, the, world, the world of Guyana, mm. even if we call it a world, mm. is not only made up of PPP and the... Well, but they, these here, they can't... They can't um, Where is civil society... Oh, they can't... This is and, and, uh, and, uh, this and so at the same time. Well, no, but that's a difficult thing yeah, to, do. to do. I don't <laughs> know if you ever tried it. It's not yeah. difficult to <laughs> I mean, walking and... Well, they, got, they got 27 ministers here, you know. This is not a place with 10 ministers. They got 27 ministers up there, and they don't get things done at all. They don't get things done at all. We have one minister of agriculture, and we have uh, four ministers of education, including uh, Rupna Ryan and, and Nicolette Henry and Vincent Alexander, all of them up there. And we have one minister of agriculture. Vincent Alexander is not a minister. Not as yet. No, well, I, I would count that as a ministerial no, you can't secretary up there. Lots of them up there. And agriculture, which is the big ministry with one man holder, who, of course, really hasn't performed since he's there. And doesn't have a clue but, about anything. But part of, part of that is that that was part of the Cummingsburg Accord. And if the AFC said, this is the person we want for agriculture, uh -huh. that's, that's what it had to oh, be. Oh, yeah, but Cummingsburg Accord did not talk about these 12 junior ministers that Granger brought in later. They were not in the Cummingsburg. Cummingsburg talked about 40% of the cabinet. I mean, and after the cabinet was appointed, I think 15 of them, then you have 12 new people come in, junior ministers. So there's none to prevent a junior minister or two from being at agriculture, which is one of the largest ministries in this country. But I understand Holder said that no, he didn't want a junior minister at the time. And now even the permanent secretary has been sent off, I understand. Jarvis. As we touch on that, um, the, there has recently been a change in the leadership of the AFC. Mm -hmm. um, and therefore, you might have thought it had something, some uh, implications for the, for the coalition in terms of the, the structural mm -hmm. leadership. Because Mr. Ramjatan, as leader of the party, was an equal, um, at least at, at the, that level. Mm -hmm. what's, what's, what Tell me what you, your views on, on the, that change and its implications. Well, at the, at the AFC Congress at, uh, at Reed and Hoop, Ramjatan recognized very late in the day he didn't have the votes. He didn't have the delegate votes. The, the, the membership of the party had changed dramatically, and he, didn't, he couldn't command the, the, the support of the delegates. And Trotman who I guess would be campaigning quietly, was able to secure the votes and defeated him for the uh, Yeah, but well, that's how it happened. But now, Schottman, having become uh, leader of the AFC, uh, I think Trotman, from my own reading of the gentleman, is more PNC than AFC. Of course, this is all my opinion. So now you have uh, Trotman is, um, with more PNC than AFC, together with the app. No. So it's a big PNC conglomerate there. But, yeah, the, but the, 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 big, the big problem for the AFC is that as a result of that change, many of the financiers, the people who take out the checkbook and write checks for the AFC, my understanding is that they're not willing to write checks now for Trotman. How do you still write it for Ramjatan? Now, so they, there was a report, uh, um, I, I, I recall, that where the Mr. Ramjatan had spoken of persons who had who had contributed to the party, mm. uh, and it was you, you know it, it was a na natural expectation that there would be some if we get into government there must be something. Mm. He calls them financiers. That's the word he uses all the time. He likes to use this word, but these financiers, some local and some uh, in the diaspora. Uh -huh. So. Are our political parties now available for sale to they're financiers? Not, they're not available for sale, but over the years, I, I guess, over the well, last... 
uh, is influ is influence. Uh, maybe that's too strong a word, but mm -hmm. his influence in the political party is available by true financing. Oh yes, you you can finance the political party's campaign and become quite influential in, in, in the halls of power in this country. Absolutely, absolutely. I know one person who, who gave uh, the AFC, the Apno people, the last time, uh, $100 million straight cash. Now, that yeah, is clearly in violation of the law. There's no law that prevents um, a supporter from giving a party $100 million. Yeah, there is campaign financing. Uh, very very it, old. In this country here? Yes, in this, in this country here, Raymond. It's just that we, we ignore it completely. Uh, yes, well. Like, like how we have Article 155. You mm -hmm. know what that is. That's the, the business about um, when you have foreign passport. Mm. So what implications do you think this is going to have moving forward? The, 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 the AFC, move, the, for the AFC? Yes. They're, they're now AFC gonna, and the a APNU. The, the, the AFC will, will merge into the, a, a, the, into the app, no, more or less. They, they're more or less, they've merged into it already. When the AFC came into, into the mm. government, into the... Coalition, uh -huh. it it had on the basis of the previous election uh -huh. um, several seven, thousand votes. Mm, seven percent. It was eleven, and then it dropped to seven or yes. something. Uh -huh. Now it's dropped about I don't know two or three. I don't know. Is that is that your assessment yeah, of, uh -huh. of the, the AFC has political no there. Mm. and electoral mm. influence? The, P the AFC has lost its support at all. It lost so its support at all. Let's let's say. Let's say they're moving into 2020. 2020. 2020 um, is a big year for Ghana. The election year and Exxon year. The year that Exxon is coming here we'll to get do it, oil. We'll get it, we'll oh. get it. Let's say the, the, the Cummingsburg Accord was for the 2015 elections. Mm. It's time to look back at it. Mm. 2020, we go, we go in because it has to do with who come, who was, it three year, was it a three-year thing? Cummingsburg is for three years. Uh, I suspect so. Uh -huh. Yes, but it's not for 2020. Mm. What kind of conversation you you see taking place with all the seven or eight parties in the coalition and the APNU? There are seven or eight parties in the coalition. What do you mean? Uh, the, in the APNU? It's, it's higher than... Higher no, than no, no, no. You, you have the, in the APNU, you have the PNC. Yes, that's one. You have the NFA... Who, who's headed by a friend of mine, Mr. Scott, an old friend of mine, came from the WP, I think, Keith Scott. I think he has one or two members, he and his cousin. Then you have the Justice for All Party. I don't know what membership they have. Then you have that's, uh, that's, the that's Justice Cien, for All Party. Cien Sharma, yes. Then you have the WPA. I don't know where they, what membership they have. They're not so active these days. And then you have Valley Cock there. So I think for all practical purposes, the AFC... Is the PNC, and then the 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 the, 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 the APNO is the PNC, and the AFC is coming into the into the APNO as a, as a party too, like them. That's what you are. So, but the question is, what kind of influence do you see those parties bringing? A Kate Scott or a, no, no, I don't see them. Or no. a Rup Narayan from the WPA. I don't see that they have any or influence Ali at Kock all. From, um, Hardly. I don't see they have any much influence in the place. The, the people with influence in the, in the PNC is the PNC leadership, which is headed by Granger, the, the civilian leadership. And then you have the military leadership, the military group, which, which is inside the government and in the PNC. They, they are very influential people, which is headed by uh, the Lieutenant Colonels, Harmon and Larry London and Retta Meyer and the whole gang of them and Eggy Fields and all of that. You have a large group of senior military men making big decisions in this country here now. We've just appointed one of them as the CEO of Central Housing. We have them as CEO of Civil Aviation, the Chairman of Civil Aviation, and all over the place. They're very influential, the military men. Uh, clearly, clearly. They're the second most powerful group in the place after the PNC. It's the military group there. Which I, I think the main man there is uh, Harmon. Is, is, the is there a third? Powerful people? Yeah. Besides PNC and military, no. No. The PPP still remains a large... No, I'm talking within the government. No. In the government, it's, PN, it's PNC and military. 
the PNC military. Another issue that has been um, dominating the, the headline and the airwaves, the role of Soku and Saru. But we have in this country Soku, Poku and Saru. Not just Soku and Saru. Just, just Poku. I come to Poku just now. Uh, Poku is Patricia, Oscar and uh, King, United. Their city hall is Poku. Okay, let's you can write it down there. No, you have a pen? No, no, let's take let's so go to Saru. Soku. Uh -huh. Now, Soku, as you know, is headed by uh, claims to be part of the Guyana Police Force. Claims to be. I do not believe it is part of the Guyana Police Force, and I do not believe they reported the leadership of the Guyana Police Force. The, the Soku is headed by a military man who calls himself Assistant Commissioner of Police. To be assistant commissioner of police, you got to be appointed by some police service, police commission? service commissioner. So I don't think he went through that route. Uh, in all fairness to the present government, Soko was the creation of the previous government with the same lieutenant colonel there in, in command. And, and they, to my mind, they operate like a, a, a political police force in the same way that Saru is a political force headed by political people, Clive Thomas or Gunse. Eric Phillips and Trotman and all these politicians there. And for that reason, for that reason, there can't be no proper police force because they're run by political people. Well, Sa no Saru's, Saru's not intended to be part of a police force. No, no, no. They're, they're intended... Let's talk about Soku first. Yeah, so Soku, Soku is this new political force on the, on the block, new, new police force claiming to be part of police, which I don't think it is. And... Um, they're, they're doing their own investigations and uh, investigating politicians and other things. That's what they're doing. And there's nothing that they're doing that the Ghana police cannot do. There's nothing that Soku is doing that Blanham can do at CID. Absolutely nothing. And there's nothing that Soku is, so, is doing now that you need Saru to do. So you don't need Saru because it appears as if Soku could do whatever work Saru is supposed to be doing. And whatever work Soku is doing, the CID could... The CID in this country could do, Blanham and well, his people. There is one, one particular area, uh -huh. um, civil recovery, uh -huh. which, which is not very well defined in our law. Uh -huh. So somebody's got to do it. If we're talking about state assets having been... Um, stolen. St stolen. Somebody's got to recover them. Yeah, but once it's a, once it's a, a, a question of theft, once it's a question of theft, it becomes a, a matter criminal. for CID. So it becomes a matter for CID. So CID could, could lock up anybody who thieves state assets and get an order to recover the proceeds of crime thing. You have that here. You don't need Saru for them, and you don't need Soku either. We already have the Guyana Police Force. We already have CID. And now you have these two new political groups. Well, the, the more dangerous of the whole lot is, is the Saru. They're operating outside of our, the, of the president there with Professor Clive Thomas, who still in my books is a highly respected economist, but I don't know if he's trained in this type of work that he's taken on, and he has some political people there with him, uh, Eric Phillips and Ogunsi, writing letters all the time. I don't know when they get time to do work. They're always writing political letters in the papers, costing them, yeah, costing everybody. That's people's rights under the Constitution. You, no, 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 that's not a right under the Constitution if you're being paid by the taxpayers to do Saru work, and every day you're writing letters to Starbucks no, about Ram. You're, you're, assuming, you're assuming that letters are being written on the time... Well, yes, I assume that, yes. I assume which, is not, that. which may not be so. Well, I, I hold to that position for the time being. In any event, they're not trained and equipped to do political work, investigative work about, uh, of this nature. None of them. Not even Thomas, Trotman, Ogunse, Eric Phillips, Rattemeyer. I met Rattemeyer. I nearly got to work with him years ago, sometime months ago. So you were about to work with... With, uh, with the Saru. Saru? Yeah, yeah. But, but, um, you would have been investigating me. Well, I would have been a very tough investigator. But I told uh, Rattemeyer where we met at OP that I couldn't entertain his thing because he was illegal. I told him his, his entire outfit was entirely illegal. I don't think uh, he liked that idea because he was supposed to interview me, but I ended up telling him that his whole outfit, Aubrey Rettemeyer from the GDM, that his whole outfit was, was uh, illegal and I would have none to do with it. So, that's, so you refused uh, the job? Well, we, we didn't even get to do that because from the very out, outset I was, uh, I was on the offensive telling him about the illegality of this, this outfit that he's, he's running. 
And he told me, you know, he said, we're working on it. We, we're working to get it legal. Well, he's working well, on it. They, 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 they There's another powerful uh, army man there, Rettemeyer, Aubrey Rettemeyer from the GDF. They, they're working on, uh, you know there's a SARA bill, state assets yeah, yeah, recovery, recovery. Yeah. Um, agency, bill. agency bill. Mm. What's your view? I, I, well, I, I, I've read that. Uh, and you know, you know critics come in for some very harsh treatment. Yeah, well, I've read. I've read about it and the, the opinions on it and some analysis of it. Sarah Bill is, of course, when it's passed, if it is passed, it will be unconstitutional. Absolutely. The whole thing. The whole thing. Saru, Saru, the Sarah Bill. Let me get this clear. You, uh, you have no objections to the strongest measures being used to recover state assets unlawfully uh, divested or obtained. Yeah, but we don't need SARA for that. We've got the Guyana Police Force to do that. We already have the Guyana Police Force in this country and the CID with Blanham. There's nothing SARA could do that the Guyana Police Force can do with Blanham. I hold to that position. You don't need them. You don't need none of them. Because if you're anybody thief state assets, you go to Blanham and lock them up. You don't need Thomas to do it. And Thomas doesn't know anything about recovering nothing and, and prosecuting and investigating. Nobody that thief nothing. They got all the Blanham for that. He's the head of CID. That's the man to do the work. He and Silal Prasad and David Ramnarine. You don't need them. That's it. What was the next question? They're all wasting time. All wasting time and wasting money. I didn't call you here to interview you for a <laughs> job, yeah? Be careful, be careful. The Saru and the Soku, they're but wasting you said time. It's, you said it's unconstitutional. That's yeah, very, yeah, it's that's unconstitutional. A very, that's a very generalized mm. term. Mm. What do you mean? No, 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 I don't want to get into that now. I've, I've read based on what I've read about it. Uh, uh, based but give, on us what a, I've, give us a... Give us but a the, the, the powers, of, first of all, the powers of the director and all kind of thing. The, the powers of the director, first of all, are wrong. The powers to do uh, uh, forfeitures and seizures and all of that. All, all of it is, is improper. All of it. But all those, of it those, is illegal. No, forfeitures and seizures, those... I would have to see the law when it's passed, and I can do... I am capable of doing an analysis of, of legal instruments in this country when I see it. But from the little I know about it so far, it is entirely unconstitutional. Similarly, the, the, the legislation dealing with them, the anti monitoring law is entirely unconstitutional. Not the entire legislation. Not the entire thing, oh, but okay, a lot okay. of it, a lot of it. Because these laws, these things are written outside and brought here for, for us to, to pass through the National Assembly. And the people who write law and draft law outside do not understand that in this country, for example, unlike the United States of America, where the attorney general is in charge of the prosecutorial functions, we don't have that here. We have in this country something called the DPP in 187 of the Constitution. We don't have the attorney general dealing with prosecutions. We have the DPP. And a lot of these laws they bring here and these what they drafted, they talk about the attorney general and the executive. We don't have that here. And any time you go in that, down that road, you breach in the Constitution. There you have where the so the so cool, the so cool, where the executive, a cabinet, picking, naming prosecutors. Our Constitution doesn't allow. That's a breach of separation. Yeah, but the Constitution of Ghana doesn't allow cabinet, the executive to name prosecutors for criminal matters. It doesn't. They don't allow that. One is clear. Do, do you see then that these efforts, well intentioned as they are, could be counterproductive and could easily be nullified by people bringing action along the lines you're suggesting? That, uh, to meet uh, in accordance with some of the weaknesses, not you suggesting the lines. But yeah, I, I think any fair judge uh, who listened to the arguments uh, would, uh, would uphold it. That, that a lot of these, the, the, the AML and the money laundering and the Sarah Bill and so on, a lot of it is unconstitutional. A lot of it. Clearly, clearly. They, they violate the Constitution of Ghana. They're not consistent. And I think it's Article 8 says to the extent that you're not consistent, it's null and void. Absolutely, clearly, clearly. But we have, we have uh, the new judges here, the new chancellor, and the new chief justice acting, both of them. 
I think congratulations are in order for, for these new people. And um, similarly, it, it is also in order to, uh, to say, um, to show our appreciation and thanks to the former chancellor uh, and chief justice, all of whom have served well, uh, Mr. Justice Carl Singh, Mr. Justice Yen Chang, Mr. Justice B.S. Roy. These gentlemen have served our country well over the years, and, and we ought to recognize them for that. And, and similarly, uh, Mr. Justice Prem Prasad, who I understand is, is going off soon uh, from public Justice service. Justice Kennard. And she, Mr. Justice Kennard. Do you think, do you think, yes, you, yes, the, the, the country. Uh, we, we uh, should, we do should. Do you think um, giving people 48 hours to demit important offices oh. is consider is good governance it shows respect no, for for the, for the members of the, the judiciary i i think the treatment shown to uh, mr justice prem and mr justice kennard uh, entirely uh, is entirely disrespectful uh, and it's it's uh, it's not nice they'll be treated very shabbily so it's here you're over. here you're saying and you, you you're you're on public record uh, uh acknowledging the service that these persons yes the, and, the, and here it is like the government budget. the government and the highest at the highest level mm -hmm. is showing that kind of disrespect yes i would say that yes for uh for canard and prem and and we, we ought to show these men some gratitude for the service they've done to this country as public servants too and similarly uh, mr carl singh chang and bs roy and as i said earlier congratulations are in order for the ladies who are now assuming these top positions. So we wish we, them well. We talk about things, um, they, they're in acting positions, of course. Mm -hmm. we, t we talked about certain of the... We know the Constitution doesn't provide for that. Of course not, mm -hmm. of course not. Um, who are you acting for? Yeah, yeah, who are you acting for? There, there's no hold, so you, who are you acting, acting for? for. It, it's uh, clearly the Constitution doesn't provide for that. Um, but in addition, we, we talked about the Local Government Commission, mm -hmm. we talked about some of the public service mm. appellate tribunal, yeah, I don't think it, it's been done. I, no. mean, I mean, look, this is disgraceful. Yeah, it is. What kind yes. of country yes. is, is saying that we have all these constitutional mechanisms oh. and we ignore them? But They're not ignore but them. I, the, the, I, government, I the government and the previous government, too. We talk about the, 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 the country. We talk about the country. Ghana, the pre previous government and this present government, they don't think these things are important for some strange reason. You, but you they're the ones who not, who who who's supposed who to be doing it. No, no, no. They're the ones who inserted these provisions in the constitution. Yeah, but you, you had the country, the leadership of the country, under Dr. Jagan, Mr. Jagdeo, Sam Hines, Janet Jagan. You come down to uh, the president, the president. You president didn't have that. you didn't have all those commissions for much of those yeah, years. These commissions are, are largely part of the Hardman-Son yeah, the process. They don't think they're so important. They but don't but think what they're kind of a country could, it, could just ignore its constitution? Oh, well, what kind of a country... Could I mean, take, take the, you, you just now were praising the, um, the, the justices. Mm. We probably don't have a judicial service commission at the moment. We don't have a judicial... Well, we are going to be having, I think, a, new, uh, uh, a newly constituted or reconstituted uh, Judicial Service Commission with the exit uh, of um, Messrs. Carl Singh and Carvel Duncan and probably Prem Prasad and some other people. You'll have a new Judicial Service Commission and you'll probably have some new judges too. So that's what you'll get. And you'll get a good separation of powers there too. Talking about, about judges, mm -hmm. The, the, the role of judges, the, their integrity, their independence, um, I understand their, um, something, intelligence, mm. have been brought to the fore in this discussion of the chairmanship of the Ghana Elections Commission, mm. which is another constitutional position yeah. well, that has gone vacant. The three I's is they are impartial, integrity, mm. and intelligence. Uh, no intelligence, no. That's what it said. Impartial, <laughs> intelligence, and no, in, independent. And independent. Impartial, yes. independent, and, and integrity. Intelligent. And integrity. Yes. And nothing but competence. But competence must be the well, one of the most important things. But it, it doesn't begin with an I. You need to get the three I's. 
integrity. This is not an Ayman story. It's an Ayman, Ayman thing, yes. An Ayman no, thing. no, no. You, competence must matter. And that's why you don't have a chairmanship up to now, because they keep wrangling over the, the, the chairmanship. The chairmanship of the GCOM is a very important position. But we have it. We have it just hanging vacant. Mm, yes. Yes. That's what you have here. Now, what implications does that have for well, democracy? Well, they're hoping, they're all hoping that eventually we'll get somebody as chairman. It will take time. But, but no, but things are happening all the time. That's correct. You don't just leave this. You know, Raymond, time doesn't solve problems. You mm. know, people do. I know, but they're, they're working on it, but they're not in a big hurry. They're working like how on we it. were working on the Public Procurement Commission That's for 12 correct. years. That's correct, yes. It's, it's not a big problem if something takes 5, 10 years. You're a lawyer. There are a lot of cases in court take 17 years. It's not a big problem. It is a problem, a to, the, the it is a problem to the people who are affected. In Burbank, the case took 17 years to, to, to be decided. The land at Kane, at Tain, for the UG campus, 17 years it took for it to be decided. There is no hurry. Nobody's in a hurry in this country. So They're in a hurry for other things. What's your view on, 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 on this exchange between the president and the leader of the opposition and, 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 and all these letter writers? No, you know? the, the British have a word for the tomfoolery. Tomfoolery. It's nonsense. I'm sure the Russians have a word for we it as well. We have a stronger <laughs> word for it too. But, but they, they cl clearly the Constitution <laughs> says the man got to be a judge. Or you got to be somebody who could be a judge, or you got to be a fit and proper person. The problem with all of that is that I think the head of the country has in mind somebody else, and that's what he's not getting his way, and that's what's holding but, but, up the whole But world. that is not the idea. The whole idea was this chairmanship mm. would be a neutral kind of person, this mm. consensus yes. mechanism mm. be between this list and the... Is that what it was? Yeah, but you're not going to get that. At the same time, you're not getting... A, consensus on the chancellor and the chief justice. The whole idea of having the opposition leader concurring the appointment of the chancellor and the chief justice was that the, the gentleman would sit down, work it out, give and take, and come up with something. They haven't been able to do it. It ain't gonna be so easy here. It ain't gonna be so easy here in this country. But, but Raymond, I mean, since in your days, mm -hmm. we used to boast what an educated set of people we are. We, we call, you know, in the, in the old days, the inspector used to come wrong and if your child and go to school. Yeah, we yeah. don't have that now. Uh, uh, we, uh, we don't have that now. We, we, have, a, we have a different culture. So, so it, it's not a question of education. It's a question of political culture. It's a culture question. This, this can't, no, but a culture sounds to me like something positive. This is not positive. No, but this culture here, th this is the... This is counterculture. This is yeah, subculture. But, culture, but this is the culture that we've been running with for the last, I don't know, since independence, I would say, of this tugging and pulling and unable to arrive at anything in, in the national interest. That's what you have here. Same thing you're going to have with Exxon. We have a big thing coming up with Exxon. The, the Exxon agreement is a big secret. The, the agreement with the Park Committee was a big secret. This agreement they're cooking up there with Skeldon to sell Skeldon is a big secret. It's a culture of secrecy. And this whole idea of transparency is alien to them. They don't come forward and they're not open with the people but, that but, put but, them but, there. But, but That's Mr. what you got. Mr. Gaskin, mm -hmm. our constitution gives people the right to information. Mm -hmm. We also actually, we have... We have Mr. Uh, Ramson still, no? No, he, well, I'm not sure about no. whether we, he's still in he's place big. because... It was a question of whether he was being paid his salary. Mm -hmm. But um, you have an access to information. Yeah, you have the right. You have the right to information. You have and, the right. and under the Constitution, you have a constitutional right. You have right. a right to it, yes. You have a right to it. And in Parliament, any member of Parliament should be able, mm -hmm. of the National Assembly, should be able to ask questions. Well, one of the problems why why they don't <coughs> challenge it, because they themselves have been guilty of that same behavior when they were running things. It's all the secrecy. The, the whole transfer of the bauxite operations in Barbies to Rusal. Anybody ever saw that agreement? How a Russian company here and came here and got all this bauxite in Barbies for free? Anybody ever saw that? You ever saw Minproc? You ever saw Sysmin? You ever saw the dealer Bos Bosai got the whole, all the bauxite at, at, um, at Linden? Anybody ever saw it? I never saw it. And we have this continuing all the time. You're going to wake up in the morning and find that Skeldon has, has been sold or given away to somebody, and that's going to be the end of it. You don't hear about it. They're working on it. The, 
whilst we work on it and we are also heading towards, as you said, 2020. Mm -hmm. I know you, you, you 2020 rearing, is a big you're year. rearing to talk about 2020 um, is the big year. The, the oil coming uh -huh. on stream. Oil is supposed to be coming on stream in 2020. Is that our holy grail? No, no, no. I know you're not a biblical man, but you like biblical quotes. I, 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 uh, not a biblical man, I, I like to read the Bible from time to time when I get time. But 2020, what, what, what they're saying here is that um, in 2020, we'll get the oil and everything will be okay. Uh, and just hold strain and, and we'll get the oil, the oil money from Exxon. I don't believe you'll get anything from Exxon uh, in 2020. The agreement we've signed with them is what they call in the trade a, a, a PSA, a production sharing agreement. It's a big secret agreement. We can't see it, we can't read it, we can't study it, and therefore it's difficult to know if we'll get anything. I don't think we'll get anything out of it. Mr. Trotman, now this, this agreement, and, mm -hmm. and, and let's, let's, in the interest of completeness, transparency, they, we're not, I, we don't have agreements, we don't have to sign, Raymond. But um, that's not the only agreement that has been signed. Moreover, mm -hmm. the, ex the, the Exxon agreement was actually signed by Jack, the Jack by, government by the, uh -huh. um, the previous administration. Previous administration, uh -huh. yes. And possibly, the, possibly, um, Mrs. Jagan might have been involved in some of the agreements. Ninety-nine, as well. yes. Ninety-nine, I th yes. But I don't think even when Mrs. Jagan was president, she didn't really go to work. I don't know if you know that. Yeah, but let's talk about the contract. So Jack Dillman may have done it. And um, the, the problem we have with the contract is we need to see it. We need to read it and see what it says. But we, we, we have a good idea. The, 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 the mining agreement with, with, with the Aurora and the Goldfields people, have you seen it? It's hard to see these things. You just hear that these people are shipping out all this gold every month. We don't know what is the deal. But, but all the natural resources are being shipped out. The, the logs are going to buy Shanling. The, 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 the goal is going to Canada and Australia. It's ridiculous. Totally ridiculous. But we have a pretty good idea what a production sharing uh, agreement is. General, the, 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 generally speaking. The government of Guyana has yeah. opted. And if you, if you look at the various legislation, you have the petroleum legislation, you have mm -hmm. an expiration, you have, I think, two or three pieces mm -hmm. of legislation. Um, one understands that they're talking about um, maybe a production, uh, a petroleum commission enhancing our capacity. We saw the other day I, the, the, president, the president appointing a special advisor on, on, on mm -hmm. oil. Um, Dr. Mangal. Dr. But Mangal. I, don't have, I don't have a lot of uh, but confidence the, in all these things, to tell you the truth. But the point is this. A production sharing agreement, we know what are the basic elements of a production sharing agreement. You have the, the producer, um, you have the government. Mm. The state owns the, 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 the oil. The state owns the resources. I'm not aware of that. It gives the... I'm not aware that the state continues to own the oil upon the signing of the PSA. My understanding is that in the PSA, the producer owns the oil. That's my understanding of what a PSA is all about. This particular PSA, we'll have to read it. We'll have to see it and read it. I know the PSA that Exxon has with Russia on the Siberian oil, the, 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 oil, the oil in Siberia has already, the ownership has moved over to Exxon with the PSA that Exxon has with Russia, in their PSA. But you, you can have different versions. Well, we'll have to read it and see it, and I don't see why it's such a big secret. Well, the minister responsible mm -hmm. has said it's not going to be shared. I know, but he doesn't want to share it. He doesn't want to share it. End of story? No, it's not end of story. No, it's well, not, it's how not are you end going of to story. Get it? How are you going to get it? Well, I can't answer that. But it's not the end of story but just because the minister says I cannot release these things. It's not the end of story. We, we cannot accept that. We cannot accept that's the end of the story. We need to see it. We need to see it and read it and study it and see what it says. Mm -hmm. And then you have this new idea now being floated that it, Guyana should join something called the EITI, but which is the Extractive Industries. Before, thing. before you get there, uh, l let yeah. me make a note, the EITI. But, uh, but uh, the, 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 the question of, of, of showing this agreement, mm. um, one hears that, look, there are security, national security implications if this agreement is shown. 
Well, you hear that sometimes, and in, in the case of um, the park and meet agreement, you hear it couldn't be disclosed because of confidentiality <laughs> clauses. And you keep hearing this thing all the time. You hear these things. It's, so, there's nothing that's new. No, what, what's, what's your the take? The agreement for Marriott, you can't see that because of confidentiality what's, clauses. What's your take on, on the oil agreement cannot be disclosed because it has security implications? I do not believe that. I do not agree. I do not believe it. I do not agree with it. It is something. Is it because it's a commercial? All it, that exists in there is commercial it's information. It's a basis, yes. It, 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 it's, a, it's, a, it's a petroleum agreement for the extraction of of, of oil and the sea bed that build, that's in Guyana territory. It doesn't say how much oil is there or how it's or what's the process. Well, the, the geologists have more or less figured out some of it, but there's nothing there for national security that that can't be disclosed. In any event, those parts of the agreement that have to do with national security, what they call national security, don't have to be disclosed. But I don't believe them. I don't believe a word they say, to tell you the truth. I don't believe a single word they say. You, you, you were going on to the EITI. And then, then you have this a whole... Extractive industry. Then you have this whole baloney now that Guyana is fighting to join this EITI. And, um, Which is what? The EITI? Extractive Industries Transparency Institute. And we, we, we're looking for the support of, uh, of Exxon to get into this organization here. This organization is, is, a, is, a, is a, I call it a bogus organization created somewhere outside by people who are unelected. We're trying to join this thing, and we'll have to yield some sovereignty to EITI in terms of the proceeds from, from, um, from oil. That's what EITI is all about, and we should have nothing to do with it. We should have no truck with the ITI at all. The, the big oil companies, the BRICS, the Russians, the Chinese, and India, and, and, and South Africa, and so on, they, they're not in it, and we should not go there. We should not yield no sovereignty to any outside force to, to, di to dictate to us how these funds are to be Well, I'm not used. even sure that one can, can, um, can cede sovereignty. Well, I don't know. They have no authority, because but that's, that's how it is. that's a very anti-national thing. Yeah, yeah, but that's how it works. And this is why we have the problem with the money from Norway, because we, we signed an agreement with Norway that the Norway money will go to the IDB. The Norway money is in the IDB, and they don't want to release it. It's and Guyana's what's your problem money. with that? This is Guyana's money. That's my problem. This is Guyana's money. Why do you think they ask the IDB? Is it... Um, why do they ask, why do they ask the IDB? Because this is how these people outside operate. Is it Jagdi or, or the, Jagdi the IDB or the, or the Norwegian say, look, we want this money spent through the IDB? And they agree to that, and they got, they got it. You know, the, the agreement that Chad signed with Exxon on the exploration of oil in Chad, which is Exxon had, had brought in the World Bank to sign the deal with Chad for the monies from Chad to go to World Bank. And when Chad wanted the money from the World Bank, to, to buy material for the defense force. The, the World Bank would not release the money uh, for the country, although it was charging money. And we'll go through the same nonsense again. It's ridiculous. It's totally ridiculous. But, I mean, this and, is not... This this is not to, suggest, to, to suggest that, that Chad, we will replicate Chad. No, we replicate but, it in EITI, not in the but, World but, Bank. But that not, that's not a, an EITI model. The, the, we got the model with the, with, the, with the Norway money. Guyana's Norway money that is supposed to come to Guyana because we've been protecting the forests and all kinds of things. The money is in the IDB, and we can't get it. In the meanwhile, while they're holding the money, we're borrowing from the IDB and paying interest from the IDB. And we have our own money sitting in the IDB there that we cannot access. But on, on this because question... Because the Norway say, you know what? This money must go for a mile. I, I think we're coming to, yes. the, to the close of the program. Mm -hmm. I, just, I just want to raise this point, however, um, which I think is, a, is a, a significant and qualitative difference. With the oil money for Guyana, we're talking about a sovereign fund, Ooh, a sovereign wealth, wealth fund. Uh -huh. No, don't be so disparaging. You have confidence in all of those things? I have zero I'm confidence asking you, in I'm it. Asking you. My answer to you is I have zero confidence in all that nonsense talk. About so you don't believe in a sovereign? Do, the, not, do you not, agree? Do, do you disagree no, with the concept no, no, that, no, that you no, should no. put aside money? You, you you cannot isolate the concept from how it's going to operate in practice. You cannot separate the two. When you talk but, about but this so, idea, we know in Guyana when you do this thing, what's going to happen here? 
And therefore, because we know that, because I know that, I'm not supporting so, it. So what would you do? You would say just put the money in the treasury and spend so it? So whose money is it? And when you put it in the wealth fund, who, who, can, who can spend it from the wealth fund? Well, but... Uh, some left hand and corner from somewhere? In the wealth fund? No, but who they, was, who they, there, put there, there? Are, there are good models oh, yes. of sovereign wealth well, fund. Tell me about the models. No, the Norwegian model is oh, yeah. excellent. Yes, and you work in Guyana? This is Guyana. This is not Norway. This is Guyana. You bring the money down here, you put two lieutenant colonel to run the thing. And two people from PNC and some other joke. That's what you can get here. On, we on know the, this. On we that, live here. We on, know this. On that he did know it, Mr. Raymond Gaston. I want to say thank you very much for, for appearing on Plain Talk. Mm -hmm. I, I understand you're going off on holiday. I hope yeah, soon I, um, you're going to Trump land. You, <laughs> you stay there. You. I'm going to the land of Trump. Trump is okay. <laughs> Operators and viewers, thank you. Good night. I'll see you next week. Fund Chaps, I think you all were going to run over here. Yeah, you know? Seven wealth fund with two lieutenant colonel from the GDF to run it. Are you kidding me? I'm bringing back Hamilton Green and Mickey Chabon.